Good afternoon, Off-Grid Technology Team. This is Alan with you back again with another radio review. Uh, we're going to take a quick look and do some testing of the TID Radio H8 that you see here in front of you. Now, there are several kinds of the TID Radio H8s. Uh, there are, there's a GMRS version, and then there is a ham version. Um, and then depending on which one you get, I've heard that both of them can be unlocked to be an unlocked version. So there's three flavors um, per se, two that are manufactured, one that can be unlocked completely so you can run GMRS and ham radio, uh, MERS, things like that. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at that today. We have here on the desk is the TID Radio H8, is the GMRS version. Um, we did unlock it, we did set it to ham, we set it to GMRS back, so um, we did make sure that this one would work for all three of those, so we'll take a look at those. Uh, but first, let's get some of the specs out of the way of what the TID Radio H8 is all about. Alright, so like I said, we have the TID Radio H8 GMRS radio. We're going to go ahead and get the browser up here for you so you can check it out along with us. Uh, so we have the H8. This is the GMRS radio. Um, this does support Bluetooth programming uh, frequency, so you can use your cell phone, whether it be um, your iOS, your Android device. There is an OD Master app that we'll take a look at in a bit that you can use to program this on the go. Um, again, this is a H8. It's a 5 watt FM only, uh, so there's no digital built-in Bluetooth. It does have a color screen, uh, which actually is quite nice. So it's probably one of my most favorite screens. Um, claims excellent battery life. We'll take a look at that as well. Um, here's the specs. So you got a 7.7 inch colorful, or that's a 77 inch, but it's a, I don't even think it's a 7, 7, 7 inch. Anyway, you've got an LC, colorful LCD. It's a IP65. Uh, that's debatable. Uh, it does frequency of VHF and UHF in the hams, UHF only in the GMRS. Um, you can set the power selection to um, medium, low, and I don't know what alto is. Uh, again, it's 0.5 watts, 5 watts, and they claim 10 watts. Uh, that is incorrect. It, this is a 5 watt radio, which we will take a look at here shortly. Uh, it does have 199 channels. It's uh, dual weight or dual monitor. Um, so it does have the ability to monitor two channels at the same time. Uh, it's got a 2500 milliamp hour battery. Uh, this is at least 48 hours in standby mode. Uh, standard work cycle is 5590. Um, so in the box, uh, which we won't do an unboxing here, but you can see what you get inside the box. You do get the antenna, the battery, the charger. This is USB-C chargeable as well, which I'll show you on the battery. Uh, this you don't really need to worry about because that's just another product of theirs. You already have that. So yes, so that's just a quick look of their site um, of the H8. So let's go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to give you a walk around, a customary walk around of what the radio has. So we'll bring it in here a little bit more. And you're looking at the front here. So you've got your display here at the top. You've got your VFO button here. You've got your BL, which is your Bluetooth. When your Bluetooth is on, you will see a little Bluetooth indicator right there. Uh, when you turn it off, that Bluetooth indicator will go away. Uh, Keynote is if you're going to program this via the cable and not Bluetooth, you need to make sure that that Bluetooth is turned off or you will not be able to program it. You've got your AB button. It allows you to switch between your two VFO channels or your two channels that you have set. You have your menu buttons, your standard keypad. Going along to the side here, you've got your PTT button. You've got your two programmable buttons here. They do do short press and long press for both. You also have a third programmable button on the top, along with the LED for the, the flashlight, as uh, also an LED for status. Coming to the back, you just have your standard belt clip on the back here. On the right side, you do have your K-style Kenwood port plug right there. On the bottom of the battery, you will see that there is actually a USB-C connection right there um, and then there's an LED to the left that's just a status LED so it'll tell you when it's charging will be red green will be full um, this does work with the charging cradle so you do have your contacts there and if I take off the battery for you guys which is kind of a pain in the butt you can see here is your battery pack so this is just a standard 2500 milliamp hour 7.4 volt lithium ion battery pack and then here is your label here on the bottom with the FCC ID. Uh, you will not find that FCC ID. I did try. 
Uh, but there you go. Alright, so just a quick look at the menu system here. So if you hit menu, it'll jump to your menu zero, which is your squelch. There are 45 menus, uh, just a lot of your basic menus that you will see, um, such as your wide narrow, your beeps, your timeout timers, your DCS, T CTCSS codes, your scan modes, anything that you've seen on a normal radio, um, this pretty much has it. Uh, there's nothing that really stopped off. There's a Hoppin RX. That's really nothing that you could really use unless you had two of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty much standard general menus, nothing really to stick out for. You do have at the bottom, you have your shortcuts. So if you hit menu two, you will go to your TX power. Uh, so just a standard menu system, uh, nothing too out of the ordinary, uh, but it gives you full control over everything. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is this color display is just beautiful. Um, it does have an RSSI indicator on the top when you're receiving and transmitting. It shows your channel frequency uh, along with the channel names. Uh, I do like that. That way if you're switching between channels, you know exactly what frequency you're on. Maybe you're more frequency-based person such as myself. It just gives you the ability to be able to see the frequencies that you normally don't see on most radios when you have a name on it. All right, so I know top of everybody's list is they want to know the power. So I've got the radio hooked up to a power meter here. Uh, it's got set for power. I've got it going into a dummy load. We are set to a repeater channel. Uh, so it's 462600, but when I transmit, it will be on 467. So I'm going to go ahead and transmit this on high right now. You can see we're getting 5554. Five, so it's definitely not a 10 watt radio. The original H8 was designed to be a 10 watt radio. The newer version, which this is the Gen 2, um, is a 5 watt radio. So you can see right there, it's, it's 5 watts uh, as we're doing it. And that is on the high power. Let's go ahead and change it to medium. There we go. So on medium, we're running about three watts. So it said two and a half. So we're a little bit higher than two and a half, not too shabby. And let's change it to low. And there we are, we're about 1.5 watts on 467-600 on low. So very respectable 5 watt radio, it does put out the right amount of power as advertised. Uh, let's go ahead and change it to a lower GMRS channel. We'll do one that's on the lower side, there we go. Do GMRS 01, so you can see we're set to 01 on the bottom channel there. We're going to raise that power back up to high. And we're still doing 5.4, 5.3. So perfect. Again, very respectable radio. We'll throw it down to medium. 3 watts again. And we'll drop it down to low. 1.6 so yeah I mean there you guys go it, it's a very respectable radio for you know 70 bucks 60 bucks that you can get these radios you're putting out five watts um, I did I don't have a spectrum analyzer I did have a friend try this on a spectrum analyzer uh, this gen 2 version is a lot more pure than the first gen the first gen had a lot of spurious emissions and things that were causing problems this one does not seem to have that so there we go, power, full power output, and very good clarity. All right, a couple more uh, radio sized features that I want to show you before I take you into the programming and the Bluetooth aspect of it. Uh, so this does have an FM radio built into it, and honestly, this is probably one of the better radios I've ever seen speaker-wise. So I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to get this close to the speaker. It'll actually come out of camera view for a second, but I want you to hear how clear this is as I play a quick uh, radio clip for you. Just so you know, it is playing. I mean, very good speaker, very good speaker. All right, real quick, I want to show you guys how you can change these modes if you want to get into either GMRS or HAM or Unlocked. 
So I'm going to turn the radio off, and what you have to do is you want to hold in the PTT button as well as any one of these three buttons. So it's either going to be the star, the zero, or the pound. Now when you're holding in the PTT and the star, that's going to go into the ham in it. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. And you can see, initialize ham sys, data will be erased. It says eraser, and it will be erased. You hit menu for yes or exit for not. Same thing with the GMRS, so we're going to do the zero and turn it on. You can see it's going to say, do you want to initialize the GMRS system? Same thing. We're going to say no. And then the last option is going to be the pound. It's kind of a pain to turn it on, but... And now you can see it'll say unlock sys, so this will be your unlocked mode. You would hit yes go through its prompts, um, it'll erase everything, and then you can restore your memories. Now, um, when you do this, it will erase everything. So make sure you have a backup. When you unlock the ham version, it's going to bind you to the 2 meter and the 70 centimeter bands. Uh, when you do the zero, it's going to bind you to the GMRS bands, uh, as well as it'll also adjust the power levels. So like your FRS frequencies, all that stuff will be lower. And then the unlocked will be unlocked, and it'll be everything. All right, so we've got our, our TID Radio OD Master app here opened up. You can see on the screen here. First, we're going to do is we're going to connect to Bluetooth. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on. Once that connects, it should kick you back out. You're going to select your model. So we're going to do TID Radio. I'm going to do the H8 Unlock since mine's sitting in the unlocked version. And we're going to hit Read. And you're going to notice that it starts reading from the radio. Should take a few minutes or so to read it. Uh, doesn't usually take too, too long. And then it's going to put you into your channel list. Now, if you click on your channels, you can see there's an update here. So if it shows green and it shows data in it, that means that you have a channel programmed. If it says null with the red, that means that there's not a channel programmed in that specific memory bank. So you can see you go all the way down, you've got your 199 channels, you can pick and choose which ones you want to open up. You can name them, so you can see here's my APRS channel. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to hit save. You can save this to a name, a file name, hit confirm, and that's going to allow you to um, do some offline editing. You can use your web browser, which is going to be beyond the scope of this review, but you can use your web browser, do some changes, and then use the app to download those changes and push them. However, once you're done getting everything that you're done, you just want to click write. It's going to rewrite it to the radio. It takes a few minutes again as well. And it's simple as that. And that allows you to use your iPad, your iPhone, your Android device on the go. And you can add, remove, adjust channels as you're out and about. You don't need a computer with you or anything like that. All right. And it's just with the offline TID Radio OD Master app. You can also edit and, and add and remove channels and settings with Chirp. Uh, so this is fully Chirp supported. If you go to your radio, download from radio source, You'll see there's a TID Radio as well as it's got the H8, H8 GMRS, and the H8 HAM. So there'll be the unlock, the GMRS, and the HAM. Um, when you unlock it or when you change the modes, you have to use the mode that you're associated with. So if you're set in GMRS mode and you try to use H8, it's not going to work. Same thing with HAM mode, vice versa. So if you're unlocked, use H8. If you're locked to GMRS, use H8 GMRS. And if you're locked to HAM, use the H8 HAM. Um, I've already imported it, so you can see here, you can add all of your channels. So I've got my normal ham radio channels up here, my 2 meter, 70 centimeter. Um, and then I've got GMRS, FRS, and MERS down at the bottom, so I can monitor. And in an emergency, I can transmit. You know, again, this is completely for educational purposes. Um, transmitting out of band on a mode not selected is illegal. Um, so please just don't do it. Um, set it to the mode that you want and use it in the mode that you want. Uh, you can also make some settings changes, such as your DTMF. You can make your FM channels. You can do your AB channel settings, as well as your basic settings, such as your sync and everything that we saw in those 48 menus earlier. Uh, so yeah, so it works with Chirp, works with Bluetooth. Take your pick. You can do either which way.
All right, so what do I think of the TIT Radio H8? Um, the first gen that they sent me uh, to review, I, I, I had so many problems with, with the power levels dropping. Um, there was some, some issues what they had with it. But the one thing I love about TID Radio, um, and I haven't seen this with any other vendors, usually they make a new model if their old model is broken, um, especially a lot of the Chinese vendors. They don't really update or keep up to date their, their radio models. Um, TID Radio did that. TID Radio was aware that there was an issue when we gave feedback. Um, they asked us to stop testing the original one and waited for the second gen. They worked, went back to the engineering team, reworked the second gen, and it is a much better radio. Uh, this has actually been one of my day-to-day -day drivers that I've been using for GMRS uh, for $70 on Amazon, uh, which you can see right here. You know, there's <laughs> plenty of them that you can get for $60, $70. Bucks. Uh, you can't go wrong with this. It's better than a Baofeng. You get more options from some of the Baofengs. The audio is crystal clear. I mean, crystal clear. I've never had audio this clear before, even on some of my higher end radios. Uh, very easy to use, very intuitive. It has the Bluetooth feature, so you're able to reprogram this while you're out and about. I wish it had IP67. I wish more manufacturers would work towards IP67 these days. There should be very little reasons why a radio is not IP67 rated now, um, unless you're just trying to throw out a cheap $20, $30 radio. But a radio in the 70 plus range, in my opinion, should be waterproofed. That way you can use it wherever you go. Um, but that being said, I mean, this is a great radio. It's a great, great feature set. Um, very easy to use. Very robust and rugged. It doesn't feel like it's going to, you know, if you dropped it down, it doesn't feel like it's going to break in your hand. I've actually dropped it a couple times. You can see on the bottom there, the battery latch just stayed closed each time. I've had no problems with this radio. Uh, very good radio to use. And if you're looking for a good GMRS radio that you want to have, uh, a good feature set with a nice little color display. Definitely check out the TID Radio H8 and let them know Off Grid Technology sent you. Have a great afternoon, guys, and thank you for stopping by. If you like this video, please like, subscribe. Uh, there's about 70% of my viewers who aren't subscribed. When you subscribe, it brings up our ratings, allows me to do more content like this for you guys. I also have another review coming out soon. Uh, actually, probably a few days after this of the HA1G, so keep an eye out for that. We are also doing some power station reviews. So we did get an Echo Flow and a Blue Yeti unit. Uh, you might have seen the video that I had for the Echo Flow that I had purchased. Um, I did get the replacement for that, so look forward to that soon, as well as a Blue Yeti, Blue Yeti EB3A that I'm doing, um, and then other fun stuff that we'll have on this channel. Thank you, guys. 73s. Have a wonderful afternoon.